guys it's nicole welcome back to another video and today i have my wrap up for july i'm sorry this is so late it's just becoming a trend for me at this point to do my wrap ups late but i do them so the first two books i want to talk about are honestly probably the worst books i've ever read in my life and they are perfect and impulse both by ellen hawkins hey guys this is editing nicole just popping in here because i hated how i talked about both these books these two books are a companion duology and they follow a cast of characters impulse follows three characters and then i think perfect followed five so there's multiple povs and the story is also written in prose they deal with serious topics from slut shaming sexual assault suicide and other mental health such as eating disorders there is a lot in these books and the issue was there was so much the discussion needed for these topics just wasn't there there's no plot to these books it felt like each of these characters were allocated a particular serious problem so for example one girl was allocated eating disorder and she basically had every single stereotype that you could associate with someone who had an eating disorder particularly a teenage girl because she also wanted to be a model she was also obsessed with beauty and she was obsessed also with plastic surgery it was very very dangerous because of how much it played into stereotypes and how there was a real lack of discussion there was a real lack of resolution and the fact that this book was written in prose made it seem all poetic and all kind of fluffy when we were dealing with these really serious and dark topics i just felt like these serious topics were used to add some depth to what was supposed to be really poetic writing which i didn't think was that amazing either there is a scene in one of these books where a girl is self-harming and she describes self-harm as delicious this happens more than once and there are a lot of other problematic scenes like this i could give you a long list i honestly don't know how these were published i think impulse was published in about 2008 so these books are older and if you're wondering why i read both i did read perfect first i picked that up thinking it was a standalone and i got halfway through until i realized that it was book two but it is a companion duology so they both follow different characters so it didn't really affect my reading experience however for perfect did spoil me for the ending of impulse I just don't recommend these books. I think they're awful. If you want to know more of my thoughts, I'm happy for you to leave a comment down below or to DM me on Twitter. In the original footage of this video, I did actually read out some passages that I found extremely problematic, but I decided to delete that because I found them triggering and I didn't want anyone who could be dealing with some serious mental health issues currently to watch one of my videos and hear me say that. So I'm happy to share with that with you in a private message on Twitter. But these are awful and I don't want to say or think about them ever again. One star to each. If I could give them zero, I would give them so, zero. The rest of the month, I had a pretty good reading month. The first book I actually managed to finish in July was Misery by Stephen King. I read his first book in the Gunslinger series. Yeah, so this is my worst, like, real Stephen King novel. I did really enjoy this. I gave it four stars in the end. It was really well written and I can see why it's so well loved. But I felt like I just heard so much about this book over the years that it was one of those books that... I went in knowing just so much about it was kind of like I'd already read it so I don't think I had that element of surprise or suspense that I was supposed to. It's the iconic gory scenes that were in here I was already aware of so I just don't think I had that shock factor. It kind of impacted my enjoyment of the story and I gave it four stars but I definitely really want to dive into more of his work. The next book I read was a reread and that is Looking for Ella Brandy by Melina Machetta. This is like one of my all-time favorite books. This book means more to me than any other book that I've ever read. It follows a young girl called Josie and she's in year 12 which is her final year of high school and she is second generation Italian Australian and it's basically about that one year for her and what she goes through and it's a coming of age story. She meets her dad for the first time because she was raised by a single mum and she gets into a relationship with a boy and I just love it. I just love how it talks about 
cultural identity i love how it talks about social class i just love it so much if you don't know i'm my dad's italian and my mom's australian so that's why i could connect to it on so many personal levels in some ways it also becomes an intergenerational story because we do get to learn more about her mom and her nonna which is her grandmother you read this like every year as a teenager and i haven't reread it in a year or so so it was really nice to dive back in and yeah five stars obviously and completed worlds collide which is the final book in the land of story series i really like this obviously i can't say too much about this this is basically a series that follows two who wander into the fairy tale world and it's just about their adventures with all these different fairy tale characters and i adore this series i think it's so fun it's so light five stars i then picked up the nightingale by christian hannah this is a world war ii story that follows two sisters in occupied france during world war ii i didn't really love this book i gave it two stars in the end it just wasn't what i wanted it to be i went into it expecting that it was going to be about these two sisters who had this really great connection and like they were separated or they were you know trying to do their part in the war during world war ii and these two sisters don't get along they didn't get along with not even just themselves but with like everyone and there was just a real lack of connection to the characters to the story and i feel like when i read wartime stories particularly when it's like siblings and they have this really strong love and connection and they're separated and something happens that just makes me really emotionally invested in the story. So examples is like Khaled Hazini's book, Even a Thousand Splendid Sons, there's two women in there and they're not blood related, but they do build this little sister, big sister relationship. And I was just so emotionally invested in that story. And that's what I wanted with this. And I just didn't get that out of it. It just wasn't for me. It just, I didn't get what I wanted out of it. So I gave it two stars. I then read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. And I buddy read this with Steph from Nefa Entertainment, Al from Hell Attempts to Read, and Esmond from Lamore the Books. Like 90% of my enjoyment of this book was the fact that I buddy read it. I put this book off for a really, really long time because I read Maureen Johnson's other series, The Name of the Star. I think the series overall is called Shades of London or something. And then the first book is called Name of the Star. And I adore that series. That is one of my all-time favorite series. And if you don't know, that series is actually incomplete. She kind of stopped writing it or she just hasn't updated on what's happening with the series in years. That series has a very, very similar premise, except there's more of a supernatural element to the story, which I honestly prefer because I do prefer fantasy. This story follows a girl who attends a boarding school and the school kind of focuses on the student's particular interest so our main character stevie has an interest in detective work so the school kind of gives the students time to develop and study and work on whatever their interest is that's why stevie chose this school but she also chose this school not only for the structure but because of the mystery that surrounds the school so in the 1930s there was a series of murders that occurred at this school and they to this day remain unsolved and they are considered one of the greatest murder mysteries of all time and so stevie selects the school in hopes of solving this murder herself because she's obsessed with it i definitely prefer the name of the star over this the name of the star is about a girl who goes to a boarding school in london also get a pov from the 1930s and i really enjoyed that i actually found that really interesting I liked how atmospheric the 1930s chapters were but all this story just wasn't very memorable it was also so quirky and every single character had to have like some strange name like there was a girl in here called element and then there was another character called pix or pixel it just wasn't really for me i definitely prefer the name of the star when i first finished this book i gave it four stars but as time has gone on i've just cared about it less and less and thought about it less and less so i think i'm gonna give it three stars next book i managed to complete was the last magician by lisa maxwell and i really really enjoyed this i gave this 4.5 stars this story follows a girl called esther and she travels back in time and basically gets stuck there and it also follows a whole cast of characters who are magi so they have kind of different magical abilities and esther's ability is to travel in time there's a heist that goes on it's really cool i really enjoyed the cast of characters i really enjoyed the angsty romance between esther and her love interest it wasn't quite a five star read for me because the middle section of the story definitely slowed down i did find that some of the world building a little bit messy it just wasn't explained clearly but i gave it 4.5 stars so i really really enjoyed it and i really enjoyed the time travel element i thought that was so well done and i love time travel stories and 
they are so hard to do so i was really impressed with how this was done i then read slated by terry terry it's the first book i managed to complete for the reading rush this book basically follows this girl who has been slated which means her mind has been tampered with and she's lost all her memories the story starts off where she's in hospital and she's just being released and she's taken into this adoptive family so she's not blood related but she's like assigned a new family which is something that happens after you've been slated and it's basically her trying to re-navigate the world because her memories have been tampered with she doesn't know how to do a lot of basic things like wash the dishes she's in this family and they got a re-teacher and then she eventually goes back to school now she's trying to not only like work out how to do a basic thing so chart wants to try and figure out who she was so it's a dystopian story i did really really enjoy it but i think in the end it kind of just went into a direction that I was underwhelmed with so I gave it three stars but I'm really excited to continue on with the series and see what happens. It's a really interesting story and it is a little bit of an older book. I think it was written around 2010, 2011. really did enjoy the writing and the pacing was really good. Like I found it to be a really good book to read during a readathon because it was just so fast paced and I just wanted to keep turning the pages. I then read the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. This was the second book I managed to complete during the reading rush. This story is a post-World War II story that follows a writer who makes a connection to all these people who live in Guernsey Island and it's just about all the different relationships and all these people are actually from the literary and potato pill pie society. The connection these people build is over books and literature and just as someone who loves reading and books myself it was like really nice to see that and read that. It was a not extremely plot driven story it was very much a character focused story but there was something really charming about it. I will say it the entire story is written in a series of letters. It did take me like half of the book to get into it but once I did I did really enjoy it. I really enjoyed seeing like all the different POVs and like how everyone has a different way of telling a story and telling the truth. In the end I gave it 3.75 stars. The third book I managed to complete during the reading rush was The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is a story that takes place during the Trojan War and then the events after the Trojan War and it's supposed to focus on the women and what happens to the women. This story started off being about the women but then the focus really shifted back to the men and particularly Achilles. Even halfway through the story, the POV of the story actually ends up sh shifting to Achilles. POV. Even when it was the women's POV, it was still all about the men and like their lives. I just felt like this was a bit false advertising, false impressions, and it left me disappointed. So I gave it two stars in the end. During the reading rush, I also managed to complete Empower Yourself by Miranda Kerr. Miranda Kerr is an Australian model and she's pretty well known. She was married to Orlando Bloom at one point and they also have a son and she was also a Victoria's Secret Angels. I was gifted this book a few years ago and she also has another book which is called Treasure Yourself and I read that and I kind of enjoyed it because we learned a lot more about her upbringing and how she kind of fell into modeling. So this book, I felt like I didn't learn anything about her. This book honestly felt like one of those celebrity books that were just kind of a cop-out made and sold to make cash. It's really just a series of basically common sense, like life lessons and advice. Didn't feel like it had much substance. I don't think it really offered much to me. It wasn't particularly meaningful. Like I gave this like one stars in the end. It just it was just, you know, yeah. I then read Temeraire by Naomi Novik and this story follows a man who comes into contact with this dragon egg and when the dragon hatches, the dragon kind of imprints on him and they form this bond and he kind of becomes a dragon rider. The dragon's called Temeraire like, and his like owner is called Will and I really enjoyed the relationship and how much they cared for one another. He's learning about all the different species of dragons and how they train and how these dragons were used in the military and war and for fighting. That was all really interesting but I just wanted more to happen. There just wasn't really much that happened in the story. This is the first book in a really long series so I will continue on and I'm expecting a lot more to happen. I think someone said that it takes a couple of books for things to really pick up. In the end, I gave this book three stars. I then completed Treasure Island. This book honestly took me like the entire month of July to read. I was expecting some great epic adventure story and it was just so dragged out and so slow and it was more about a mutiny than the actual hunting of a treasure. It was also one of those cases where I knew the story as well. I just knew what was going to happen so I was kind of just like bored. I did enjoy the writing. I don't think I really got anything out of it. There's also like, no female characters in this at all. It didn't give me anything so I just gave it 2.5 stars in the end. I then completed The Poppy War. 
I really, really enjoyed this book. This book follows a girl who is going to be married off to a much older man, but in order to escape that, she takes this exam so that she can enlist into a military school and she gets the top examination results and is accepted. And then we follow her in this military school. I, I just really like this. I did find it really interesting that as the story went on, I connected less and less with the main character in. Interesting experience because usually when you read a book, you connect more and more with the, st the character as their story goes on, but that didn't happen. I really also liked how towards the end of this book, we got a lot more on the mythology of the world and like the religion. I gave this book four stars in the end. I completed A Crystal Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I picked this up because Yasmin from Yasmin the Reader gave this a glowing review not too long ago and it just made me want to pick it up. I love this book so so much how you just start a book and from page one you're hooked that was this for me I followed a girl called harper who is from our world and she is taken into this other world parallel world by this god called gray and gray has this task of collecting girls from our world and taking them to his world for his prince and his prince has to try and find someone who will fall in love with him that will break his curse because he starts off looking like a prince and then slowly he will transform into a beast and it takes about three months for this to happen and then the whole thing kind of resets so he's stuck in this cycle really loved how bridget camera made the beauty and the beast story that we know her own i thought it was really well done i thought it offered a lot more to the story than I thought it was going to so they gave it 4.25 stars and i highly recommend last book i managed to complete was my favorite read of the month and that is middle game by shannon mcguire wow this book is just i don't even know how to talk about this book it's just one of those books you read and it's just so good and it just has left me speechless i can't even I don't even know what to say. I just love it. I love the writing. I really liked the characters. I really liked the way the story was told. And it follows two twins who were genetically kind of made and enhanced. It's like their life growing up and their journey to becoming basically gods. It's really interesting. It's really cool. I don't want to say much more than that because I think this is the kind of book you're going to go into knowing very, very little. Everything was just done like in such fine detail and in such fine depth it's just i don't even know what to say it was just incredible and you should get this go because i think it's amazing it got five stars might be my favorite read of the year so far those are all the books that i managed to complete in july again i'm really sorry that this wrap up is a little late or really late but i hope that you had a really good reading month in july and i hope that you're enjoying whatever you're currently reading and i'll see you next time bye